I like I forget what to say because it's been such a long time since I've done this. Welcome back to Fan Fridays. I am your host, Amon Adwin, along with Reality Recaps, and it is so good to be back. And we are on the sixth season of Big Brother Canada. We didn't think that we were going to get it back until we as fans decided to have an upheaval and Global TV decided to respond and give us what we wanted. And I'm so excited to be here to talk about another season of Big Brother and let's just get into it. So we started off with Big Brother Canada this Wednesday on the 7th and beforehand we were introduced to 14 new players and four potential house guests that would have been voted into the game. Okay, let me just start off by saying, get this out of the way. I'm not a fan of this continued sequestering of potential house guests in the hopes that they get voted into the game. That is just the suckiest. I mean, not all of the people that they recruit are fans. Some of them are just that recruits so not it doesn't always hit them as hard but for people like Kirsten I mean it just it, my heart broke for her when she was not one of the ones chosen to be a part of this season I won't go on and on about it because I mean I think Twitter is pretty much spoken for itself but I mean you always just feel a sense of pride when someone of the community gets the chance to be on the show and to watch them get this close and they get snatched away. It's just like, God damn, Big Brother Canada, like, come on. Like, I'm not really sure. What, how, how is it a twist? That does nothing but twist our hearts. This first episode on Wednesday was probably the fastest premiere, but that's usually how it is, not only for Big Brother Canada, but also Big Brother US. There's a lot that they have to sort of truncate into a 40-minute episode. So we got right into it. We were introduced to all the house guests. Let me just say right off the bat, some of my favorites were Rosina, Paris, I kind of like Derek, even though he's a, bit, he's a little bit vanilla. And although I'm sure he's probably going to be the king of bad decisions and game moves this season, I'm really digging Hamza as well. Or Hamza, I think that's how you pronounce it. So after everybody gets into the house, they are all gathered around this table that has a bunch of goblets on them. And one of the goblets, instead of having two red eyes, it has one red eye and one blue eye. Maddie's ass. <laughs> And she's also such a big fan of the show, so I'm sure it just, she was kicking herself when she did this. She picked up the special goblet and then handed it off to Andrew. You know, trying to be polite so Andrew didn't have to, you know, get through all of those people just to get to the goblets. So, little did any of them know, but that special goblet actually granted the holder special powers to place seven players in hell and seven players in heaven. I mean, and this was just a bad look for Andrew. I mean, it was International Women's Day this week, and he decides to put almost half the women in the house in hell. I mean, come on. Women already lead hellish lives as it is. So Andrew decides to put himself, Ryan, Hamza, Jesse, Olivia, Eric, and Derek into heaven. And then the rest would be Rosina, Will, Maddie, Johnny, Paris, Alejandra, and Kayla going straight to hell. Which is so twisted. I mean, you gave the person that gave you the power to put them in hell in hell? Come on, bro! So the ones that went up to heaven to go eat pita chips with Jesus and Charlie's Angels were immune for the week. And everyone else that was in hell was not only a have-not, but were also up for elimination and had to win HOH to save themselves. And let me just say, leather is already a hot, hot clothing. I mean, so for you to be in hell having to wear that? Oh my god. So people began to fall off of the wall, namely Alejandra and Rosina, and then all of a sudden Rosina became the loudest cheerleader for all the girls, and eventually just Paris. I mean, she was screaming so loud. This is the grandma had too much wine. Like, let me say, like, I feel like she could beat every single one of the Golden Girls in the drinking competition because she was that loud. But the one person that hardly struggled at all wins the competition, and it is Johnny. So moving on to the next episode that premiered last night. Johnny is now tasked with the opportunity to name two house guests for eviction. He decides to bring the waterworks and act like he doesn't know what to do and that all of this pains him, like this hurts him much more than it hurts you and yada yada yada. And I feel like people bought it for the most part, which is, I mean, okay. It's always difficult to come up with reasons to put people on the block on the first week, but ultimately he came up with the decision of Alejandra because she was one of the first people to fall off of the wall. And then Rosina because she pulled a Tyra Banks at the HOH competition in front of Paris. We were for you, we were all running for you, and how dare you! Mad 
props to Rosina though, because when Johnny told her that she was probably going up, she did her damnedest to not go up. She said, please, I will be that person in your corner. Don't listen to everybody else. I wasn't the only person that was cheering for Paris to win. All of the girls wanted Paris to win because all of the girls were in hell. Moving on to the veto competition. It is really, it looks really fun. I feel like I would have a lot of fun doing that, but it also looks deceptively tiring. I feel like it looks like a lot of fun to be in this, what is it, caterpillar cocoon thingy, but that thing was probably hot, okay? So they have to get five or six balls across this little course into the holes at the top of this little hill, but they couldn't use their hands. They had to use their head and their bodies to nudge it up, and they also had the opportunity to put one of the golden balls that they were given into one of the slots, and then that would slow down everybody else for about 30 seconds. Johnny ends up pulling out the win, which to most would seem like this is a bad idea, like you're coming hot out of the gate. You won the HOH and you won the veto. But I think the fact that since he only played against half of the house both times, it kind of lessened the blow a bit and it seemed like, okay, well of course he had to win because it was either win or go home. And in terms of the, H or the veto, it was either have him win and keep them the same or anybody else that was already in hell would be up for elimination. We really didn't get to see much campaigning. Uh, once again, the episodes were pretty quick because we had a lot to get through. We had to get to the first live eviction and we had to figure out who was going to make it into the house out of Mikey, Kirsten, Marin, and... Ooh, I forgot that girl's name. Veronica. So, ultimately, Johnny decides I'm not going to use the power of Vito. Alejandra and uh, Rosina remain on the block and it is time for the live eviction. And by a unanimous vote. Oh my god, I hate that word when it comes to Big Brother. But by a boring ass unanimous vote, Mama Rosie was evicted from the Big Brother house. After Mommy Rosie leaves, we are ready to watch the four gatecrashers make their way on stage and find out which two of them would get the chance to participate in the sixth season of Big Brother Canada. And as the kind Canadian people would have it, the two angels, as they were portrayed, got into the house. So congratulations to Veronica and Tamara. Once again, I feel so badly for Kirsten, but we're not gonna we're not gonna dwell on that, okay? Now here's the deal. I just I just have to talk about this. They were told that they were not allowed to reveal to the house guests that they were voted into the house and they had to come up with a lie, any reason as to why they would have just randomly stumbled in to the Big Brother Canada studio. And these two decided to say that they were just in the live audience. And Arissa or whoever, or Jesus himself, pulled them on the stage and said, you guys get the chance to participate in the sixth season of Big Brother Canada. You know, I was thinking about inserting a cricket sound effect there, but I feel like even the crickets would be pissed off and be silent in protest. So you guys just happened to have your bags there. You guys just happened to be the two that were picked. You guys just happened to not know anything about what was going on in the season, even though you just said that you were in the live audience. Needless to say, as the feeds came on at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time last night, most of the house guests were kind of catching on to the fact that that's probably not what happened. And I'm happy about that because if they were just going to swallow that story like a sponge, I would have had, I, I, you know, I would have just had to replace the entire house with a bunch of Kirstens, to be honest. So there you have it. That's what happened over the past two days in Big Brother Canada 6 land. And I'm so excited to get back into these with you guys. Hopefully the next videos will be a little bit longer, a little bit more in detail. But I just wanted to get this out there just to get my footing right again into this world. And I'm so happy and I thank Eric so much for having me back for another season. And yes, everybody just have a great weekend. Happy Friday. Um, and I'll see you next time. Peace.